panel, we're trying to give you a real break tonight. The second challenger we're allowing you to see. Uh, you still have your four-minute deadline. I can tell you this story is national. Let's start with Toby, please. He looks like an athlete. It wouldn't be an athletic event, would it? No, I'm afraid it would not be. Were you ever an athlete? Uh, not a professional Very athlete. amateurishly, yes. Uh, did this uh, national event take place in eastern Canada? That's east of the Manitoba border. Yes, it did. In Ottawa? No. In Ontario? Yes, it was. Toronto? Yes. Was it a happy event? Yes, very happy. Were you... <clears throat> this may be an area of opinion, and we must divide it, too. Was it political at all? Uh, partly. Partly political. And did a lover marriage come into it? <laughs> no. No? <laughs> the giggles over the happy event. How about you, Frank? Wow. Did this, um, did this event uh, occur in the last uh, five years? Yes, it did. Did it involve an election of any kind? Not an election, no. Did it involve an act of government of any kind? In a sense. <clears throat> well, in a sense, uh, did it involve uh, <clears throat> did it involve an act of the legislature, interior legislature? Not no. this did particular one. No. Did it involve uh, did it well it, did it involve any regulations of the government? Yes. Hmm. Of a specific kind, we must add. Uh, uh, right? Was it were, was the government involved? The provincial government, the provincial legislature. Remotely. Mm. Did this concerned more than involved, would you say? Perhaps that's that. Did you gain any money out of this event? Personally? Yes. No, I didn't. I How about you? I'd like to take a crack at it. Well, the line of uh, questioning established uh, to date sort of throws me off, but I'm going to ask it anyway. The gentleman is very good looking and uh, wears clothes very well. I was going to say that I thought perhaps you want a. Uh, a fashion designing contest for men's clothes or, or for ladies' clothes. <laughs> he could always fall back on that if things get. But I don't see where the legislature comes into that one. Very kind, no. But I, I, I think that um, I just had to get that one off my chest. Thank you. Um, did this happen uh, in 1957? No, it did not. Two minutes to go. Well, and. Gordon's the fastest one that I know on this panel. Will this happen in Toronto within the past five years to you personally? Not to me personally. Was your name on the front page in connection with it? Not with this specific headline. But the story was on the front pages of the Toronto newspapers. Yes, it was. I must and say our challenger has a connection, but if he chooses to say not specifically. And this was a happy event. Very happy. Was it to do with the admission to this province or country of any citizen? No, it had nothing to do with that. It didn't have to do with uh, meeting a girl on a bridge and marrying her and bringing no, her across. Gordon, let me remind you, happy is an opinion of our challenger to which he is entitled. Did it have to do with any arrival into Canada? No, it didn't. Did it have to do with any birth or multiple birth? No, it had nothing to do with that. A happy event, not a wedding, not a not money. But he had money. Yes, he got not money. an arrival. No, no, I don't think money entered no, into this. No. Uh, uh, anyway, shoot, Toby. Well, I was just wondering, uh, next week I think the Liberal Convention is displacing us. Did this have anything to do with, uh... I'll, I'll no, say no, no now, Toby. Say ahead of time before <laughs> I get into trouble. Uh, or conservative? <laughs> no. No, it had nothing to do with any political party of any At nature. All. Uh, how, and how, a Toronto election had something to do with it? No, it wasn't an election. An issue, then? Yes, yes. How about a visit? Was it a visit to no, this town? No, it wasn't. An issue is the closest. Yeah, Frank, you're the Floridation? issue. Right? Floridation? We're just about... Uh, pardon? Floridation? Yes, I'm inclined to go along with that. It I does. think we can give it to you that Metropolitan Toronto approves Floridation. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> When was, when was it ever approved in Toronto? Uh, Gordon, uh, we'll have the chance to discuss this. Uh, we're going to, we want to uh, recreate this story, both sides of this very controversial subject, as well as a film story on fluoridation in 60 seconds from now. Uh, Dr. Dunn, is it true or false that sodium fluoride is a basic ingredient in rat poison? I think it's fair to say that sodium fluoride is contained in a rat poison, and I think it's also fair to say that it's contained in tea. Uh, what comparison you wish to draw from that statement will be up to you to draw it. Uh, it is an ingredient of rat poison. Dr. Dunn, isn't it also a fact that iodine is used in salt? Uh, I would, would like to make that point if we didn't have it in the salt. If we didn't have a statutory requirement to have it in salt, we'd have a, a goodly number of goiters about, which is, we don't have now. Is sodium fluoride in water any more dangerous than iodine in salt, Dr. Dunn? 
We believe that sodium fluoride in water in the proper proportions is in no way dangerous or harmful to health. Why then are you determined to force this on the people without a vote? Uh, I don't think I am prepared to force anything on people because I have no legislative authority to do anything. I will attempt to persuade people that it is a desirable thing, and perhaps we could draw an analogy here to an educational system. I live in Etobicoke where you do. My older boy goes to school. I really believe it's beyond my competence to vote on any type of curriculum of study or any type of pedagogical approach to his learning because I think people of greater training should perhaps so make the, uh, the citizens decisions. aren't intelligent enough to decide for themselves whether they want a rat poison shoveled into their drinking water. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Dunn, uh, Mr. Sinclair and I have been on opposite sides of this question for a long time. Yes, he I've has, observed that. He has, uh, he has uh, broadcasted uh, continually mm -hmm. against it. And I have written in favor of it in my column of the Telegram. Now, I suggest to you, Dr. Dunn, I would like to ask you, rather, isn't it a fact that every reputable medical and dental organization in North America favors fluoridation of water? That's a loaded question. Why don't you ask it? I am asking. <laughs> I am asking. Isn't it a fact? Isn't that a fact, Doctor, that every medical and dental association in North America is in favor of fluoridation of water? That is a fact, and I think you might also I add the World, it a fact. The world it Health Organization fact. itself. And, and, and isn't it a fact that the Provincial Health Department of Ontario has endorsed fluoridation? As well as the Minister and of the also of a And that, isn't it also a fact that in, every, <laughs> that in every center where fluoridation has been tried over a period of years, it has been found beneficial to the health of children, to the health, the health of the teeth of children? Emphatically, yes. Right. Doctor, I'm 57 years old. How old are you? I'm 33. I've got all my teeth. How many have you got? <laughs> uh, I have them all except third molars, which just all weren't positioned. Third. Well, I have them all of mine. Mine were knocked out in a car crash long ago. But I don't know what that is proving. <laughs> no, it doesn't prove anything. It proves that I was brought up by cleaning my teeth and not by taking rat poison in my water, so I've got my teeth. The fact remains that 98% of our population suffers adversely from dental ill effects, and it seems to me only uh, reasonable to try and do something to prevent this uh, horrible increase in Why don't you advise case. that they clean their teeth? Well, we've done that until our heads are flat, hitting them against brick walls. Dr. And Dunn. <laughs> <laughs> hey, a voice in the wilderness, I'm Ken. Dead, <laughs> Thank you. You're very brave. I'd just like to ask this question. Are, are there any proven cases where fluoridation has had an injurious effect, uh, effect on the health of people? There are certain individuals who attempt to make certain claims which have never been supported by any reputable scientific organization on this country. Doctor, when you I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, would you finish what you have to say? I was thinking of the I time. was just going to make the point that an organization such as the Canadian Medical Association and Canadian uh, Dental and American Medical Association are not going to endorse a procedure which is not only going to harm the public, but harm ourselves who, after all, live and bring up our families in these communities as well. And isn't it a fact also, Doctor, that, uh, that the dentists, the dentists will actually be harming their own, uh, their own profession in the, in, the, in the sense that they won't be making as much money if we all have, uh, if all our children have sound teeth. I think a basic premise of any health profession, physician or a dentist, mm -hmm. is that he attempts to eliminate the need for his service. Exactly. I don't like to sound trite, but that is the principle under which we operate. The dentists have nothing to, to lose. But you want to force it on people against their wishes. For instance, the Christian scientists. You're saying that, specific. I'm not. What yes, about I'm iodine and salt? It. Isn't that the same uh, analogy? I don't know. I'm, I'm objecting to being compelled to take medication. You object to take table salt? No. You, how well, about, you have to. How, you about, have to chlor how about chloride in the water, in the drinking and water? Gordon, do you object Two to, wrongs don't make to it vaccination? Right? Do you object to having your children and grandchildren vaccinated? Com against my wishes, yes. I wouldn't object in that case. But I do object to this rat poison being shoveled into my water. You, your children have to be vaccinated in certain circumstances. So do they. And I think that's quite right because it's for the protection of the community. You're the right. reason you drink, you reason you drink chlorine on your water is because you know it's necessary. And chlorine is a deadly poison, isn't it? No. Yes, of course it's a deadly well, gentlemen, poison. Gentlemen, <laughs> the basis for poison gas. Before uh, Mr. Tom Payne and Mr. Sinkler square off, I think we should thank our guests for being such a good sport and coming to our program, and uh, thank you for taking time out from your busy schedule. <laughs> Perhaps if uh, Gordon Sinkler is willing, we'll, uh, we'll arrange a rematch at some time. I, I'd like to assert here that uh, Gordon is a very nice man. He has the strength of his convictions. <laughs> and uh, we will be back in 60 
event take place in eastern Canada, that's east of the Manitoba border? Yes, it did. In Ottawa? No. In Ontario? Yes, it was. Toronto? Yes. Was it a happy event? Yes, very happy. We're trying to give you a real break tonight. The second challenger we're allowing you to see. Uh, you still have your four-minute deadline. I can tell you this story is national. Let's start with Toby, please. He looks like an athlete. It wouldn't be an athletic event, would it? No, I'm afraid it would not be. Were you ever an athlete? Uh, not a professional Very athlete. amateurishly, yes. Uh, did this uh, national...